Hello everybody, it's good to see you again in the class of Mechanics and Strength of Materials. In this module, we will discuss about the mechanical properties of material. So, in this segment, I will start with the tension test which can be used to find so many important mechanical properties of material. Just as I said just now, there are several important mechanical properties of the material can be determined from the tensile test. So, at here, I want to show to you the testing machine and also the specimen. In this figure, you can see the testing machine. This one is the upper crosshead which can move in the vertical direction. This one is the load dial to display the magnitude of the axial force. Then, this part is the motor and load controls. The specimen of the tensile testing is attached to this part. Also, the testing machine is equipped by the extensiometer, which can be used to measure the deformation of the specimen. Let's see the detail of the specimen. The specimen of the tensile test is like this. You can see the original diameter and the, origi the original length of the specimen is known. So, we can calculate the original cross-sectional area. Next. We want to see the experiment of the tensile testing. I will show the video to you. The tensile test. First test, material with yield point phenomenon. In the first tensile test, a plain carbon steel with yield point phenomenon is to be tested. This is the test piece. It has a cylindrical test region with an original diameter of 10 mm and an original gauge length of 100 mm. Within this test region, distance marks have been drawn at regular intervals. They help to visualise and measure the plastic behaviour of the specimen. Using a hand control, the tester moves the upper crosshead into its correct starting position. Now he can place the threaded ends of the test piece in the lower and upper grips of the testing machine. In the next step, he swings the extensometer into its working position and checks that everything is correctly prepared. Then he selects all necessary testing parameters on the control computer. Ready. The test starts and the extensometer's sensor arms are carefully pressed onto the test piece. This way, the gauge length can be measured throughout the whole tensile test. The gauge length is displayed at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. At the beginning, it amounts to 100 mm. During the tensile test, the test piece is slowly and constantly elongated with a standardised speed. The force that the test piece opposes to the imposed elongation is recorded and can be seen at the bottom left-hand corner of the computer display. The material behaviour can best be observed in a force elongation diagram. The force F is being plotted upwards on the vertical axis, the elongation delta L towards the right on the horizontal axis. At first, the force rises rapidly. Force and elongation are proportional and form a steep, straight line in the diagram. In this area, the material behaves elastically. If the test piece were to be unloaded from this area, it would spring back completely to its original length. In materials with yield point phenomenon, the end of the elastic area can be seen clearly. The plastic deformation starts abruptly and is accompanied by a sudden drop of force. If the test piece were to be unloaded now, it would not spring back to the original length, but instead show a permanent elongation. In the next stage of the tensile test, an almost constant force level with slight fluctuations occurs. This phenomenon is called the Luders effect. After a certain strain, known as the Luders strain, the force increases again. The material opposes an increasing force against the imposed elongation. Its strain hardens. Up to the point of maximum force, the test piece is strained uniformly along its length. This means that the test piece gets longer and thinner but keeps a cylindrical shape.
As soon as the maximum force is reached, a neck begins to form at one point of the test piece. All further plastic deformation now only takes place at the neck and eventually the test piece fractures there. In the recorded force elongation diagram,
as you can see in the video, this is the result of the tensile testing. We get F and also the elongation delta L. If we divide the force by the, the original cross-section area, we can get stress. Then, if we divide the deformation by the original length, we can get the strain. So, this diagram is called as the stress strain diagram. Note that this diagram is imprecise, it's called as the engineering stress strain diagram. Later, you will learn also about the true stress strain diagram in the class of engineering materials. So, that's all for this segment. In this segment, we have seen the experiment of the tensile testing until we get the stress strain diagram. In the next segment, I will discuss the material properties that we can get from the stress strain diagram. So, thank you and see you again in the next segment.